Hey, welcome back to Talk with TQ. I'm Tony Quest, and I really enjoy this this doing this particular show because I meet the most amazing people, even people I kind of know. I learn things about them I didn't know, and I really thank you for coming to the show again. This week we are going to have a working artist on the show, a working performing artist, and I'm very proud of her, and I'm very proud of the fact that I actually know her, and she's agreed to do this is our second interview together and things have changed since our first interview. Her name is Sol Miranda. She's an actress and she's a working actress and she's very, very busy. And I'm going to let her tell us all about what she's been up to. Sol, you're here. Yay. Yay. Again. So it's very different than the last time, isn't it? I know. Yes. 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 Thank you for having me, Tony. Oh, you're very welcome. Now, the last time I interviewed you, you were working. You were working, yes, but yes. you're working even more so now. Well, so they say, uh, yes. I hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the last time, when was that interview? I forgot, was that like three or four years ago? I would say it was about uh, four or five years ago. Okay. okay, something like that. And it was mainly because you were being so gracious at also promoting Embark, yes. performing and literary arts, which... Uh, you know, it's on hiatus now, but it was active in Peekskill for eight years right. uh, um, under Katie Schmidt Fader and myself running it. Um, and uh, now, uh, again, you know, we're taking a little break, focusing on our careers. Yes. And um, but yes, thank you for having done that. Right. And you're making a living. And I'll tell the audience that occasionally or actually frequently, if you turn on NBC. We might see you on an episode of Law and Order. Um, you just recently, um, I guess relatively so, been engaged in a Netflix series, which I understand is being resurrected for another season. Uh, no, actually, the the um, one would hope, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, yes. Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, mm -hmm. which is on Netflix, and yes. actually NBC is. Um, it uh, co-owns, okay. if you will, mm -hmm. uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, um, okay. produced, created by Tina Fey and mm -hmm. Robert Cardlock. Uh, the last season was mm -hmm. shot this past year, 2018. Okay. Uh, so it's been four wonderful, very funny seasons. Mm -hmm. um, I was very proud and happy to... Um, have had my character uh, have a, a wonderful subplot plot in during the last season on right. episode seven, right? Four oh seven, where Donna Maria finally got um, a nice a nice subplot plot uh, written in. Uh, I enjoyed that very much, right. and uh, and have received a lot of support from friends like you, supporters like you, artists in town like you and elsewhere um so very happy very uh grateful with what unbreakable kimmy schmidt um contributed in my life yes and we're all very proud of you thank you you know we really are in peak skill because you're definitely a peak skillian i'll say i don't know if that's a real word but i know it's been thrown around a bit yes 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 we'll make it work okay. works for me okay <laughs> it works for me too i hope people will consider me a peak skillian finally but you're working in hollywood and that's mm -hmm. quite a feather in your cap you know and it's nice to be able to say that someone from your hometown or your current hometown is actually doing business in the arts in Hollywood. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, even though everything I do is based, so far, is based in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, you know, the, the production companies are based in New York and mm -hmm. Los Angeles. Yes. Um, um, casting is being done uh, in the city and in Los Angeles, maybe also yeah. Atlanta and Chicago, the main hubs, right. mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, and so to be a part of such a, um, such an energy and such a, um, I don't want to call it competition necessarily, but mm -hmm. there's a synergy and to be a part of it, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's amazing. You know, it's, it's uh, mind blowing when you think about, wow, I landed this opportunity, this character in a, 
in a show mm -hmm. uh, under Tina Fey and Robert Carlock. And uh, at least when I went for that, that audition, um, that casting office, there were a lot of many Latina women actresses there that afternoon. And so, so you feel grateful, and even to to have been a part of the the, the process, mm -hmm. you know, it it, it was uh, wow, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. uh, I I got here, and you know, I also have to add, no one is alone. You don't do this alone. There right. is a there is a team, and I am blessed with my team of two people, which is my agent, mm -hmm. Cynthia Katz from Gotham Talent Agency. Um, we have been working for 11 years. That's a long time. Yes, that is a long time. And we started, and no, I was not booking everything right away. Uh, but um, then I started kind of booking what really, um, what, what was really important for me to book, I guess. Right. You know, uh, timing right. is everything, being prepared, being mm -hmm. ready for it. Um, there's, there's luck as well. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it has been a wonderful journey thus far. Yes, and luck is like being prepared to be in the right place at the right time. And you do have some preparation because you're schooled. You went to school, I understand, in Puerto Rico. Yes, I did my uh, BA mm -hmm. in drama at right. the University of Puerto Rico mm -hmm. in Rio Piedras. Okay. And then I did my Master in Fine Arts in Theater at the University of California, San Diego. Right. Uh, that was many moons ago in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and I really focused on theater, mostly. Uh, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to keep expanding my training as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, so after San Diego, I moved to Seattle. I worked, did some theater in Seattle, then uh, regional theater. Then I yeah. moved to New York City and did some work there and regional and uh, throughout that time I always also my bread and butter was also working as a professor at Hostos Community College okay. in the South Bronx which is part of a community college part of CUNY. Okay. Um, that's been a wonderful job that um, has grounded me at the okay. same time has allowed me to have another uh, go through other doors, yes. uh, another life, mm -hmm. that not everything is my theatrical work, right? Right. Um, and uh, then we moved to Peekskill, um, my ex-husband now. Uh, we have two kids. They are in their teens. Mm -hmm. And we've been in Peekskill since... 2001. Wow, that's, a, that's yes. a long time. It is a long time. Yeah. Yes, that's why uh, even though, you know, Puerto Rican through and through, uh, but yeah. I feel very, very much like a Peekskillian now. Yes, yes, very much so. Sounds like we went came to Peekskill at the same time. Oh, really? When did you come? 2001. Oh, wow. I lived up, they used to say, up the hill in my ivory tower. <laughs> you know, they. I was told, you should come down out of your ivory tower and come down to the neighborhood. Uh -huh. So that's what I did. What ivory tower is that? Well, because I lived in in the condominiums up there, oh. you know, which is sort of on the outskirts, although it is still mm -hmm. Peekskill, and you pay pe taxes to Peekskill, mm -hmm. I decided when I sold to move down in this neighborhood. It was a conscious decision, and I'm glad I did it, because I got to meet you. Absolutely, and you're an amazing presence as an artist and as a, you know, community um, supporter and friend to many. I hope so. I enjoy the community, and I enjoy bringing, bringing people to the community and presenting them on the show or whatever which way. I think it's important to have people from outside come in here to Peekskill because I think it enhances the entire um, I guess the, the entire brand. Absolutely. You know, yes. because people realize that something is actually happening here. Now, you are just one of these people who I watched do a few things. Now, you did a production a few years ago um, that was celebrated on Valentine's Day, mm. and it was called the Vagina Mon the Vagina Mo Monologues. Yes. And you, um, <laughs> I just stumbled over that. It's Vagina Monologues. That was something that you produced and um, and directed. 
rejected, and it was it got a, a lot of attention and a lot of acclaim. And you really had like a an idea in your mind. It was something that you wanted to do. And and tell us a little bit more about that because I was involved to an extent. Yes. You know, but I just remember the production being very, very moving, mm. and you did it in a couple of different vernaculars. Well, the, the Vagina Monologues by Eve Ensler is a iconic mm -hmm. uh, theatrical piece by now. Mm -hmm. um, it's been world produced. Yes. Uh, it's to, this year, I think it's been 21 years right mm -hmm. now. And actually, I just last week did it. Uh, I participated in um, in the Sleepy Hollow Tarry Town production of okay. the Vagina Monologues. Oh, okay. I just performed. I was not in charge of directing or producing. Mm -hmm. It took place at the Tarry Town Music Hall. Right. And there were 32 performers on stage. Yeah. Uh, it was an amazing. Once again, it was an amazing experience. The cause is important, necessary, relevant still today uh, for the new generations that have no idea and are learning that we need to be a part of stopping the violence mm -hmm. against women, against girls, against, uh, of course, men, young boys, trans. Yes. But the reality is, sadly, that every, I believe, every nine seconds, or maybe now it's every 20 seconds, a woman, a woman gets assaulted or, or raped or, or, or um, violated in some kind of way. Right. Um, so it, it is still important today. When we did it under Embark, it was co-produced by Katie and I, yeah, and also co-directed yes. uh, by Katie and I. And we, what I loved about that is that it, it was a wonderful um, community uh, th that performance, just like the one in Tarrytown with 32 performers. There mm -hmm. were community members, there were professional actors, emerging actors, and ours did not have 32 performers, but yeah. we were like almost 14 or 15, I yeah. believe. And uh, again, it was people from the community who have never acted, and there were emerging actors and professionals. Um, and you, and I believe a couple of other artists in town, women artists, mm -hmm. uh, um, we had your amazing paintings. Yes, we did exhibit, and you gave us that opportunity, and I thank you for that. Oh, that was beautiful. That was really beautiful. I still remember your painting. Um, Which one was it? <laughs> one of them. I don't have my glasses right now, but one one of your paintings was right uh, as part of the backdrop. Right. So it was stage. pretty much center stage. Yeah, I was so yeah. I was so embarrassed and honored at the same time. It's like me, <laughs> you know. But I was very honored by that. I like the fact that when you did this particular v the vagina monologues, you also had another venue for it where you actually had it outdoors, and it was called I think. Uh, Eighteen. That was uh, the the um, one billion rising. Yes. And every February fourteen, but mm -hmm. you can do it other days. Mm -hmm. You know, any time between February and end of March. Um, the the V Day uh, yeah. mm -hmm. awareness, um, global awareness mm -hmm. to yes, uh, increase knowledge mm -hmm. uh, and promote uh, education regarding the terrible. Uh, violence against women and girls around the world. So the One Billion Rising, also started by Eve Ensler, was about uh, gathering outdoors, dancing or drumming or, you know, gathering, uh, open, uh, you know, having poetry, yes. um, jams, etc., where the community and artists and, and politicians and uh people from the municipal staff gather and connect and hopefully even schools are more and more I would say less less uh, um, hesitant about participating yeah. you know because yes I mean it's, it's it's a strong it's a strong theme yes but you just never know who what little girl God forbid or teen mm -hmm. or mother out there yeah. needs the help and yeah. doesn't dare to communicate that and that there is help out there. 
And most people, a lot of people, especially if they're being abused in some way, they don't even realize it. What was interesting about that particular production, you actually staged something outside the um, the library here in Peekskill. And yeah. It was almost like a, what did they call like a mob? Um, well, we, we did the flash mob dance flash mob, of yeah. Break the Chain, which yes. is uh, a song that was created particularly for the One Billion Rising global yeah. movement, yes. where everybody would go outside mm -hmm. and <clears throat> dance to this song, Break mm -hmm. the Chain, Break the Chain of Violence. Right. And it was choreographed, um, the dancer, um, the amazing Debbie, dance. Debbie Allen. Debbie Allen, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Debbie Allen uh, choreographed it. Uh -huh. And, I mean, we did it in front of the Field Library yes, I remember. for, like, three years in a row. Yeah. We did it. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was amazing. I mean, we, we really got a lot of um, parents and uh, artists and youth and kids yes. being a part of it. You know? And it was something, because I, I remember it was snowing, but everybody was. was out there doing it in the snow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. very moving. Yeah. It really was. And, and it was your passion, soul, that made that happen. You and Katie, you made your, your passion. You took that and turned it into something highly positive. You know, and I was really happy to be a part of it in any which way. It was cold out there. Yes, yes, yes. I remember yes. that. It I was mean, pretty yes, chilly. Yes, because it's always done on February 14. Mm -hmm. doesn't have to, but that's like the day. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, yeah, you're right. You know, it's, there's, um, there is a lot of passion still um, mm -hmm. for community activism in the arts. Uh, we have people in the community who are doing it, like Carla Rae Johnson yes. and uh, Paul Stark mm -hmm. and Mary Stark and um, um, Marcy B. Friedman. Yes. Um, um, there are so many others, um, and I'm just tapping on, there are more, but I'm just tapping on those who are in the performing arts. Yeah. Of course, there mm -hmm. are so many more in the visual arts, yes. okay, and media. Mm -hmm. uh, such as your crew here, mm -hmm. of course. My great crew. Um, James and Joe, yes. James Brooks, Joe Pisano. Yes, and best. so, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful community, you know, that raises awareness and gets, gets together for the greater good, you know? Yeah, and I thank you for that. That was really a very moving event. I, it's something that's sort of like etched in my mind. Mm. It's like permanently back there. You can kind of draw it up and it, it makes you realize there's a reason why people do their art. Now, you're also um, making a living as an artist, which is something that um, many people say is not possible, but you're actually doing it. Now, you, I want to ask you, your intention was always to make a living as an artist, or did this something that, is this something that just happened to you? Did you just step in it, or was it mm. something that you planned? Or could it be a combination of things? Because I know there are people that want to know, like, how did you do it? And you're still doing it. Ay, that's a, that's a <laughs> great question. Um, I think uh, I started, and many of us begin with this incredible um, faith and believing yeah. that... Um, there is something calling you that you need to do. And when you're very young, because I, I, I have been acting, even you know when I was four or five, my mother would scold me and I would run to the bathroom, put a towel over my head and start <laughs> crying in front of the mirror, you know? So everything was acted out and magnified mm -hmm. uh, for dramatic purposes, okay. of course. And you know, I, 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 my mom would tell me, it's like, oh my God. Here she goes. <laughs> the drama to, queen. To act, the drama queen, yes, to act it <laughs> out. Um, and I was doing that, and I was doing that in school, and I was in every talent show I could get. And then mm -hmm. when the drama club, uh, when I was able to join the drama club, I had to wait until ninth grade, and, you know, I... Talking about lack of instant gratification, like so many of our kids um, mm -hmm. have access to immediate... You know, having things or the information at the tip of their fingers. Right. You know, I remember when I was in fourth grade and I knew I had to wait until ninth grade to be a part of the drama club. Mm -hmm. 
an audition for it. So, but I was like, I was so uh, passionate about it. I'm willing to wait. Oh, okay. To wait. Mm -hmm. So I would say my life has been a passionate waiting, stick to itness, and stubbornness as right. a, as an artist, as a mm -hmm. as an actress. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's a degree of insanity. I never thought I was gonna make a living. I never thought I was not gonna make a living. I never thought about the money implications. Mm -hmm. I never thought of that until after grad school. You know, I always believed. Right. I truly, truly always believed. And um, I think now at 51 years old, mm -hmm. now it's like, no, okay, this is, this is also my work and I can make a living. And I think, you know, you put it out into the universe mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, you keep believing, you keep having faith, you keep trusting that if you have survived until now doing what you love and stick to it and the grit about it behind it, you know, um, you know, I'm not freaking out, and I am now, you know, divorced. Mm -hmm. I'm a single mom. I have one kid who's going to Syracuse in September. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. I am so proud of my daughter, Julia. She actually signed uh, as a, she just, she got signed as a D1 um, uh, athlete in the rowing team of Syracuse for Syracuse. Yeah. That's quite a feather. That's an amazing, yes, only 1%. So and now I'm talking as a proud mom. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, she freaks out and says, like, mom, is going to be expensive. Mom, student loans, mom, this, mom, that. I said, no. You got an amazing gift given to you. You grab it, work, be responsible, be accountable, because yes, mm -hmm. maybe you will get some loans, but the money will come and you mm -hmm. gotta trust that, you yeah. know? And I think, you know, her parents, me, uh, speaking for myself, you know, are the vehicles for that to happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had the Hulu, uh, the first with Sean Penn, right. and that came out of the blues. I went right. to New Orleans. How did and they find you? My agent, you know, okay. my agent is the one that says, okay, well, I got an audition for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I got, I got an audition tomorrow. It's pilot season right now. Mm -hmm. So, so you hear about these auditions the day before five o'clock, I got an audition for you tomorrow. Can you make it? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. So you just go, go, go. And be, you know, you have to be constantly available, even if the side of, you know, the script doesn't, mm, you know, seem to be like amazing but you know you keep showing up is right. my point you right. have to keep showing up mm -hmm. in anything you do whatever it is yes yeah and you you definitely were showing up it's like sometimes people will say to you <clears throat> someone like me you gotta show up for your relationships you gotta show up for your relationships you gotta show up you gotta show up for what you love mm -hmm. in the end mm -hmm. you're accountable for what you love for mm -hmm. who you love yes you know and you have to show up you, you you can't afford mm -hmm. not to. Yeah, oh, know? there you go, right? You can't afford not to. So you knew your life purpose, your life's purpose when you were just a little girl. Yeah, so, I, I was I was very lucky to to know since so, I was, you know, I think since I was four or five years old, I knew I was, I'm going to be an actor. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. So often, um, you know, because you're a parent as well, and it sounds like your mother was supportive as well. So often... And my dad. And your dad, and your dad. It, it's so often children are discouraged from going into the arts, mm. even though that might really be their life's purpose. I mean, how could you speak to that? Because you know what I'm talking about, I imagine. There are parents that they're afraid that their kids are going to starve. I won't use that term that people use about artists because I mm. think it's derogatory. Mm -hmm. But um, so often um, people and children are discouraged mm -hmm. from pursuing their artistic aspirations. But somehow you've been able to work around that for yourself and you're actually putting your money where your mouth is and you're encouraging your own daughter to pursue her aspirations as whatever it might be. So what would you say to that, like to parents and, and or their children who are listening to you, mm -hmm. you know, and they're saying, I, I really, the, everybody in the family is a doctor, you're gonna be a doctor. Everybody in the family is an optician, you're gonna be an optician. But you might have a passion to be a painter right. might, or a singer. 
Uh, it's not easy mm -hmm. um, to be a parent. We don't have a manual. We make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully we'll be brave enough, have the courage to align ourselves with our children's um, passions and, and um, talents and gifts and purposes. Uh, there may be more than one purpose, right? Yeah. Um, my story is that it was my father, someone who came from poverty, from a rural town that now is one of the main towns in Puerto Rico, but this town, Caguas, um, and he lived through the Depression era, right? So he built himself, he became an electrical engineer, and he was the one who told me when I decided to go to college and do theater, he said, you go ahead do what you need to do. And and I was in shock. I mean, I did not expect it from my father. My mom was a little more like, oh, do something else as well. But, you know, the fact that, yes, you got to follow your passion. And what he said also was, do it now while you're young, mm -hmm. right? Because if you want to change later, <laughs> as we grow older mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, settle more and become more... Um, worried about bills, right? Uh, he said, now is when you do it. Now is when you take those risks. Right. I mean, nothing against those um, who decide to go into the arts in their, you know, after 30 something. No, I'm yeah. not saying don't do it. If you needed to be a doctor for your father and mother, and but you always wanted to be an actor or a painter or, or an architect, whatever, whatever that is. But, uh, um, yeah, I think you have to follow your passion, but also I do worry, you know, as a parent mm -hmm. that, especially in United States, it, you know, it's not Germany, it's not Czechoslovakia, it's not, or Czech Republic rather, it's not, it's, it's not a country it's that uh, really supports and makes the arts sustainable, yeah. you know. Uh, so yes, I mean, I, 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 I I worry as well. Yeah. I want them that the, I want my kids to be yeah. financially independent. But I, I also, I, I also, you, you, I would say, we got to balance it. Yeah, balance, balance, balance. Right, right. Well, this is this really interesting to me to talk to you. I could talk to you for hours, and I'm just going to sort of like end on the fact that you started off talking about faith. You know, mm -hmm. and I think it's beautiful that you were able to have the faith in yourself. Your father had faith in you as an actor and your mother obviously had faith in you. And you're actually passing that same tradition on to your daughter by having faith in her. Mm. And I, I, I do believe in that because I think faith is everything and I can definitely, you know, relate to that. And um, where can our audience see you next when we turn on the TV? I know everybody's going to want to see you now. Where can they see you? Well, uh, Netflix is 24-7 streaming. Yes. So if you haven't seen Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, well, mm. it is on Netflix. Yes, see that. And uh, uh, Hulu, uh, the first with Sean Penn. I mean, the first two episodes. Right. And uh, coming, I don't know when this is coming out, but uh, I just shot two episodes for a new sketch comedy okay. for Comedy Central called oh. Alter Alternatino. Okay. Uh, it's a Latino sketch comedy. Okay. Uh, the, um, the creator, his name is Arturo Castro. Okay. And um, what else? What else? Well, and you know, uh, it's... Uh, it's pilot season, so a lot of auditioning is going on. Right. So, so we um, never know. So when this comes out, when is this coming out? Ah, uh, soon. Soon, maybe in a month. So maybe in a month I have news, and maybe you can... Have you back. Be, have, no, or just put it on since the interview. <laughs> She booked this. Yes, and have you back. There's hope. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's hope. And so I thank you so much, Sol, because I know you're extremely busy. I'm extremely honored to have and you. And you're busy, too. I am busy. That's true. But you're extremely busy doing what you do, and, and you're just moving and shaking and making it happen. 
thank you know you. you're an inspiration thank oh, you so thank much you so i appreciate you so on the show you. and thank you to your crew james you're and my, joe my crew is the best thank you james so much and joe i can't do it without them mm -hmm. yeah they're very special thank you so much and thank you for the bogo yeah we're drinking the wine Ooh. let's take a, a toast yes 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 cheers cheers Salud. to you to Salud. all your success. Thank you. Thank you, audience. This is for you. And thank you for coming to the show. I'll be back, you know, with another great show, with another great guest. And I thank you, Soul Miranda, for being on. And I'm looking forward to seeing you the next time. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.